Hello, N4H and H here. What is that background? Well, that is my QSL card. I designed that in Microsoft Publisher and sent that off to uh, Merriman Printing, M-E-R-R-I-M-A-N Printing, uh, Kurt Merriman, Kurt with a C. He makes uh, QSL cards, and so uh, you can send him your own design, and he'll, um, he'll make it. So uh, I'm, at the end of the video, I'm going to explain the uh, photo in the background behind me there. Uh, but for now, I want to move off of this. Oh, uh, let me mention, if you work me on the air and you want a QSL card, just go ahead and send me yours with a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I'll send you one of these back. All right, I'm going to get rid of that now and get into the subject matter of this video. Um, I'll, I'll, le uh, I'll leave the, uh, the photo in the background. That's the photo I snapped for that QSL card. And again, at the end of the video, I will tell you uh, what that is. Let me, uh, let me move over here out of the way because I have something else to show you. All right, so um, I had a phone call yesterday. Well, by the time you watch this video, it will have been a few days ago. Um, and it's not the first time I've received this phone call. It has to do with the FTDX-10. Imagine that. Um, but in particular, it has to do with the FTDX-10 and some confusion regarding the connection cables needed for the Elecraft amplifiers. Um, well, in particular, the power combo that I've told you all about earlier in the year, Elecraft's been selling their 500-watt amplifier and their 500-watt tuner as a combo, and it's really a good deal. And they've been throwing the cabling in for free, but there's confusion on which cables to get, even at Elecraft. Um, so I want to clear all that up and I want to show you how to wire that because what I want you to be able to experience with this setup is the ultimate automation. In fact, I got a video coming out later, I believe this Friday called ultimate automation. Um, watch for that one and you'll see ultimate automation in action with my, uh, amplifier. I'll show you what I, what I mean by all that. So, uh, let me jump right in here. So we're going to get into this wiring diagram and, and the, um, and the combination of the tuner and the amp. So I'm going to open up my browser, go to Elecraft website here, Elecraft.com. If you click on products and go down to amplifiers, it'll bring you to this page. There's the 1500 watt version, the KPA 1500. What I like about their amps is I like this, they call the speedometer. That's your power output. It's kind of a, a rough idea of your power output. It's, <laughs> Quite accurate, actually, but there's a digital display here that gets it down to a tenth of a watt accuracy. It's so accurate, I was I had my um, calibrated watt meter calibrated to the uh, National Institute of Standards I used to have sitting on top of the radio. I just took all that out of the equation, and I just used this. I can get a rough idea from the LED, and I can read the display for more info on that. Um, this has a built-in antenna tuner. Okay, you've been watching my channel a while. You know I hate to call them that. But that is, mm, it's just the, the terminology that most people are using. You know, they call them an antenna tuner. It's not stretching the wire on your antenna. It's not <laughs> trimming it. It's uh, an impedance matching unit. So it's making the antenna system look like 50 ohms so your amplifier and uh, or radio are happy. So, uh, but it does have one built into it. And then it has two antenna ports. And it'll remember which antenna you like uh, for which band? Well, what it does is it goes back to the last antenna you used on any particular band. So it's really cool. That's playing into that ultimate automation I'm talking about. Now, this particular unit <clears throat> requires uh, 50 volts DC to operate. This is the RF deck. So there's a separate piece, the power supply, same size, and it requires 240 volts AC. It will not run on 120 volts AC. You can't get legal limit power uh, from 120 volts AC. All right, so, um, but enough of that one. I want to move it down. I want to talk about the 500 watt. This one is the one that is involved in the combo that I'm talking about. And again, the confusion has to do with how to wire this up to an FTDX10. Uh, it, you may learn something even about connections to other radios if you watch this video. But uh, it has a speedometer, green up to 500, and then goes yellow up to 600. Uh, but let me tell you, that this unit has four 150-watt transistors in it. It is capable of 600 watts. And even the Elecraft folks told me that. And people I know that have this unit, um, 
have run it up to about 630 uh, just to see that it could. But if you watched my video on decibels, S meters, and amplifiers, you'll understand what I mean when I say you get the most return for your money in that first four or 500 uh, watts. Um, and let me just say, it, say this. Much above 800 watts is bragging rights. Doesn't move the S meter all that much. Uh, you get most of that gain in that first four or 500 watts. So this amplifier can give you that and then some. All right, and then there's another speedometer for SWR. Being that it's a solid state amp, you want to keep that SWR in the green. You want a 1.5 or less. The old tube amps could handle a two to one, but solid state doesn't like to see a two to one. Uh, band buttons, uh, you press one for whichever, you know, these are done in megahertz, seven megahertz for 40 meters, 14 megahertz, 20 meters. Um, you can press those when you change bands, or honestly, if you start talking, it'll automatically change bands for you. Yes, it will. It has a frequency counter built in. Um, but what I'm going to show you is ultimate automation. I'm going to show you a cable that will even tell it what band you're on the moment you change bands on your radio. It'll also take care of keying the amp when you transmit. So it's really, really neat, clean, streamlined setup. About the only button you'll really ever need to touch over here after you power it up would be toggling back and forth between standby and operate. All right, so that's the amplifier itself. And by the way, this is the entire amplifier. There is no separate power supply. It's all built in, but there is no built-in antenna tuner. All right, well, that's going to take us over here. This is the matching antenna tuner called the KAT antenna tuner, KAT 500 antenna tuner. Again, really, it's a matching unit, okay? It's performing some uh, impedance matching so that the amplifier, in this case, would see 50 ohms no matter what your antenna is. All right, so, and this has three antenna ports, not just two. And uh, another speedometer to show you the SWR. Really neat, and as you can see, a nice compact package. In fact, the footprint of this matches the footprint of the amplifier. I think some people actually sit the amplifier on top of the uh, tuner. So um, let's look at how this is wired. There's a wiring diagram in the manual for the KAT500. And I'm going to, I'm scrolled down about halfway of the manual so you can see that this is the area that shows how to wire a Yesu radio. So on the back of your FTDX10, you've got a 10 pin mini den called linear. That is the one you want to use. Okay. Now let me just mention real quick. There's a tuner manufacturer out there who sells the cable to plug into the FTDX10. They made their cable with the 10 pin, which is linear port for a linear amplifier. There's even a amplifier company out there who made their cable using the eight pin. So theirs has to plug into the tuner port. Okay, uh, that's just messed up. But I want to show you something. In the case of this Elecraft, you're actually going to go from the radio's linear port to the transceiver connection on the tuner. Yeah, well, that's because you're really on your way to the amplifier anyway. The tuner's just going to, it's going to pick up some data on the way, while the, you're sending data to the amp. It's just going to interrupt it and pick it up. So it knows what band you're on, and it'll also, you know, it'll send the uh, keying data on over to the uh, ampl amplifier so it can transmit. Um, you will not need this RCA jack, the PA key, power amplifier keying jack. You won't need that. That's an old-timey way to transmit an amp using the RCA cable. You won't need it with this setup. In fact, you won't need any of this. Uh, you'll just do what you see here. You'll plug it into power. The power plugs in right behind where you see that D-sub there. And uh, you'll plug in your coaxes, you'll ground it, and uh, in these cables here, you'll be done. And you'll get ultimate automation. So uh, what do I mean by that? Well, again, you'll see that on Friday, but here's a, here's a teaser. You just change bands and talk. It's, it's as if you had a, a, a perfectly tuned antenna for every band you operate. All right, so uh, again, linear port on the back of the FTDX10 to... This is called a DE15. It's a 15-pin D-sub. It looks like the letter D laying down. Plugs into the transceiver port, and then there's an amp connector over here. Think of that as saying to the amp. <laughs> and that is a shorter cable you'll need that goes from that connection over to the AUX1 connection on the back of the KPA500. It says AUX in this drawing, but it really is AUX1. So those two cables are what you need. Now, how do you get those cables? 
That's where the confusion is. I'm going to take you over to the uh, amplifier page again, and we'll go down to where it says power combo. This is how you can order, uh, find out and order that combo. It, like I said, what they've done is they've made a good price if you buy the tuner and the amp together. You can always buy them separately and then um, you know come back and order the cable too. But if you buy this combo, they've been giving you the cable. It's about a $60 value. So, and they've already priced the combo where it's a good deal. As a matter of fact, I won't mention a name, but there are cheaper brand solid state amps out there that cost more than this combo. So I'll just leave it at that. All right, so which cable do you get? This one here, CBL YAE BK DIN 10. So the easy way to remember that is FTDX 10. So you look for the cable with a 10 in it, but that's not really why it's a 10 though. Uh, let me mention, to, here's a problem. People have ordered, they, they go in here and there's no FTDX 10 listed. So they would order, well, FTDX 10 is like the little brother of the FTDX 101. So maybe this is the cable. No, no, no. That's a 15 pin. And that is correct for the linear port of an FTDX 101. The FTDX 10 has 10 pins in its, um, or, or, or uh, for its linear port. So what should happen is, and I, I mentioned this to, Ellicraft months ago to ask, I asked them, please add FTDX 10 to your site. And they haven't yet. There should be a comma FTDX 10. And by the way, I think that should be FTDX 1200. But anyway, uh, this is the cable you want. CBL for cable, YAE for Yesu, BK, DIN 10. B for band data, K, K for keying signal, like the push to talk. DIN, Deutsch Industry Normative, that's German standard. And a 10 pin. There's a description over here. Uh, I'll just quickly mention it. Intermediate mode. Um, the Yesu cables are either going to be standard mode or any intermediate mode. That just has to do with how much data that cable is sending over for various functions. For a Yesu, this is all you need. T it's a description. 10-pin mini DIN. Okay, that's what's on the radio end. To a DE15, that's going to plug into the transceiver port of the tuner. Let me uh, let me go down here and show you the back of the tuner. See right there, transceiver. All right, and then what's it say? For band data plus keying, the BK part of it. But look at this, plus an aux cable to connect the KAT500 to the KPA1500 right here. All right, well see, remember I showed you in the diagram, that's the aux cable. So if you order this CBL YAE BK DIN 10, you're also going to get that little jumper cable that goes between amp, I'll show you in the diagram, between amp and aux one on the amplifier itself. Between, think of that as saying to the amp, all right, on the back of the tuner over to the aux one of the amplifier itself. And let me show you the back of the amp. So there's that aux one. So that will connect over here to amp. Transceiver will go to the back of the radio, the FTDX10. So the other end of this cable is that little 10 pin mini DIN. All right, that's just to clear. And again, you won't even need to connect any of these up. Just that power, your RF connections and your ground. So this RF input that's coming from your FTDX10, RF output, you know, you only need those little like three foot coax jumpers. That RF output will go to, let me show you, transmitter on the back of the tuner. And then, of course, those are your antenna connections. Don't forget to ground uh, these units. And if you can, try to use that uh, flat braid cable for grounding. There you have it. Uh, again, you will not need to use any of the RCA plugs if you use this cable system that I'm talking about. And be very careful. Don't, don't get something off of eBay, those... Um, those homemade cables like that, make sure you get it from Ellicraft so you know it's wired right and will take full advantage. There's some cables out there that all they can do is push to talk. So you want to get this one right here, CBL YAE BK DIN 10. All right, hopefully that cleared the confusion on that. Um, like, I had, like I said, there's been several people that have contacted me having been sent the wrong cable, I had a gentleman call me yesterday and they sent him the eight pin. So he was trying to get it to work and trying to use an RCA connection to get the push to talk. And uh, what happened was, is um, he told Ellicraft that he had a uh, FTDX 10 and they just sent him the wrong cable. 
All right, so I told you I'd explain this uh, photo. Let me, uh, let me take the browser off here. And so I'll tell you about that photo. That is uh, the view looking south from Trey Mountain, T-R-A-Y Mountain in North Georgia. Trey Mountain is on the Appalachian Trail. Where I'm standing there when I took that photo is a small area of rock. And so literally, like when people are hiking, you have to move out of their way. Um, it's a really small area. So I normally, what we call activate, I normally activate that one with just my HT. Some people do HF up there. There's one little nook you can kind of get off the path a few feet. And I don't know if it's, it might be five feet square. <laughs> if you have a vertical, you could do HF there easily. Um, but I, in all honesty, you could probably, you know, you could, I've seen guys, uh, I've heard of guys draping their, um, they're in fed or uh, just across the tree limbs because your height above average ground is quite good there. So, uh, yeah, the sunbeams were coming down, the ice on the trees. And uh, so this is one of the designated summits for summits on the air, and that is worth 10 points. And like I said, the day that I activated this uh, was winter bonus, so I got 13 points that day for that activation. So that's what that is. So, hey, shout out to the Patreon support team who bring these videos to you uh, without them offsetting the cost of production and, for that matter, uh, helping me justify my time away from the family. I wouldn't be able to do this. So if you like this type of content, um, you know, I just mainly focus on operating techniques, uh, equipment, a uh, little um, helpful tips like this. Uh, if you like that type of content and you want to help me keep this channel going, consider becoming a part of the Patreon support team. To do that, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH, patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And if you would, please smash that thumbs up, click that like button that helps me out with YouTube. You have no idea, or maybe you do. <laughs> if you watch a video and don't smash the thumbs up, it can actually hurt a channel. So please smash that for me and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, click that notification bell and you won't miss another video. I generally put out two a week, one to two a week, um, sometimes three if there's something important, an important announcement or whatever. I'll get a third video out if I need. So please help me out with that. And um, another thing, if you would, share the video with friends, uh, you know, text message, email, uh, maybe, uh, or, you know, social media. Share the video with friends so they can know about this as well and help them out. I would appreciate it. And hey, thanks for watching the video. And 73 from North Georgia, this is N4 H&H. &H. Take care.